Thank you very much, Dr. Qureshi. Um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Professor Muhammad al Um Professor Muhammad al gumati obtained his BSc degree in physics and mathematics from the University of Tripoli in Libya and went on to study for his MSc in California and PhD at the University of York. In 1997, he was appointed Professor of Electronics at the University of York. His research interests are in surface science, electron optics, and nanotechnology, with particular, uh, with particular emphasis on the development of novel instrumentation for nanoscale analysis. He is the author and co-author of more than 200 articles, uh, patents, and a book. Professor al Gamati is the chair of the Foundation for Science, Technology, and Civilization, and acts as a religious uh, advisor to many, to many UK universities and charities, and speaks on the historical contribution of Muslims in science and technology. So please welcome Professor Muhammad al Gamati. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. And I normally, um, when I start um, a piece like this or a lecture, I'm, I'm, I'd like to thank the, the organizer for inviting me and taking the chance of getting someone who's completely outside uh, the, 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 um, the topic. But I start by saying a, a small prayer that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam had started with. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي هو الله uh, open my chest make it easy for me and take the stutter out of my speech so I could be better understood and where best that I am an alien to the subject of medical sciences I'm a physicist uh, an engineer by practice and, and I'm now uh, talking to people who know on the subject, perhaps an order of magnitude, two orders of magnitude than I do. So bear with me, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it beneficial for me in the first place, and hopefully that I can contribute something to your um, uh, conference today. What I will be doing, however, is um, just giving a, a bit of an introduction to see where the shared knowledge is between us Muslims and those who are non-Muslims. I, I will take you into a journey whereby I will demonstrate that it is a mankind. Um, are people in the back under, hearing me? You don't need any loudspeakers. I'm loud enough. I mean, my children and my wife tell me that I'm loud enough. But I'll, 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 I'll do it as I'm told. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes, of course. I told you I'll do it as I'm told. <laughs> Uh, oh my God, <laughs> that's good. Right, um, so the second bit will be uh, just giving you uh, about the Foundation for Science, Technology and Civilization, which I'm honored to be uh, a servant uh, of its activities um, uh, and, and, and sharing it. And then the third one, which is, it, is very important for me, is just getting um, a bit about the um, scientific method of inquiry which the Muslims actually have laid the foundations for and used it as well. And I will give examples, uh, particularly from medicine, whereby people have done that. So it wasn't um, uh, black magic or uh, alchemy or any nonsense like that. It was scientific. It wasn't astrology. It was astronomy. And there is a huge difference between the two. Um, and then I will be quiet and allow you to carry on with the the uh, rest of the, um, the conference. So anyway, as a scientist, or so somebody who's trying to be a scientist, I look at books and see where we have got all of that. And one of the very um, recent books, actually, showing the people who have um, made it easy for us, uh, technology and, and, and scientific uh, advances, uh, from the earlier times until present day. So you take a book like this, and any of our young people can take a book like this and then look at it. And what I will be asking you to do is bear with me and look at the page number and the year. And of course, I will be making mistakes and pronouncing some of the Greek names. But m many of these Greek guys were born in a city that I my, myself was born in, Alexandria. 
but they were still Greeks because they were speaking in um, uh, Greek. Page 8, and we get Democritus. Page 10, and we get Hippocrates. Page 12, and we get um, Aristotle, and it's all BC still. Page um, 12, Aristotle. Page 14, and we get Archimedes of Alexandria. Um, page 16, we get Johannes Gutenberg. So I'll go back and say 14, and you have Archimedes. That's about 15, 1600 years. Gutenberg, you may say, Guten Nacht, Auf Wiedersehen, and just forget about it all if it is in German. And carry on, uh, 1552, uh, Da Vinci, page 16, page uh, 20, Copernicus. Ah, I have a problem with this guy, but anyway. Um, then I look at something which I'm very close to as a physicist, and the camera, camera obscura, invented in the 16th century. A few weeks ago, the University of York decided to give an honorary doctorate uh, degree to a very famous um, uh, artist who has looked with another physicist from Arizona State University and, and, and said, well, the um, camera obscura has been used by some of the, 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 the artists to um, enlarge and, and imprint um, uh, images, and they were uh, coloring it and doing it. And he said, and that was the 13th century and, and stuff like that. And he said, well, some of the aberration, the defects of the lenses were in the picture. The eye, the, and some of the pictures are still alive until today. And he said, well, they must have used the camera obscura. That is nonsense. Anyway, so I look at that. And of course, as Dr. Qureshi was saying earlier on, um, this person have a problem with Arabic numerals still. But anyway, it could have been Kulroy Silk, uh, but it could be in anybody else. So I look at the Dark Ages and I give a, a project to one of my final year students, and he said to me, hey, Prof, I got um, a title in one of the websites saying it is 600 years of degenerate, godless, inhuman behavior. Was it? So I look at the whole thing and say, well, all right, as that book has displayed, we're starting here with the timeline. It's the Greeks, the Romans, and Dark Ages, Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, and modern day civilization. And of course, as a scientist, I will look at this and say, well, nonsense. It is not scientific. I, 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 no phenomenon like this going like up like this and then boy, down, and then coming up again. What kind of nonsense is that? So, um, I say, well, did really modern civilization arise from nothing? And my job is to convince you more with evidence, not just because I'm uh, enthusiastic about the subject, but to convince you that, yes, there is, and we have to get the message out and get people really understanding what we are talking about. Um, so we started um, last century, I can say, even if it is 99 or, or 98, and say, well, we started with a number of lectures, and, and uh, my colleague in particular, Professor Salim al-Hassani of UMIS and University of Manchester, was very active in that and saying to me, Mohammed, we've got to get this message out. We really got to. So up and down the country, um, it spreads to the States, to Europe, to the Middle East, telling people what we have. But importantly, um, uh, getting people from all over walks of life. So FSTC is not just made out of people in academia. is in the UK or elsewhere is wrong. To deny somebody else's existence is wrong. And that's what the message is. So um, we started that, and we pride ourselves for being non-political and non-religious. And because of that, we have non-Muslims with us saying, I believe in what you're saying. It is wrong to teach my son or my daughter that nonsense. The Muslims, and like Professor George Saliba of Columbia University, who's a good friend of mine, says, because it was actually all written in Arabic, sometimes people refer to it as the Arabic sciences, but it actually is all the sciences that came from China until the uh, Spain, Muslim Spain, and it was all written in Arabic, but from all walks of life, people with any ethnicity were contributing to it. Um, right, so 
what we are trying to do is not to go and, and search for manuscripts, but to popularize what the scientists, and particularly historians of science, have managed to do. Um, our uh, very successful website, muslimheritage.com, we get tens of thousands of day visits to our website. It's written in English in a very um, uh, authentic way, peer-reviewed. Um, Writing books, illustrated celebration, we have also some edutainment activities like the 1001 Invention um, Exhibition, Teacher Facts, Lessons, uh, City 1250, Films of the Library uh, of Secrets uh, of uh, Sir Bing Kingsley, and, and the rest of it. That's one of our pages which we will be changing um, in due course. So if I just use some of these um, names in here, and you can see that I have used two colors, um, dark blue and lighter blue. And the lighter blue to tell that these are non-Muslim scientists and practitioners. We did not differentiate between Muslims and non-Muslims. Anyone who wanted to serve the community is more than welcome. And I will show a good example of that um, later on. So you have Gustav Nuruka, mashallah, who's Jewish, uh, Memonides, who's a great uh, Jewish scholar, uh, known there, Sabbath and Kora Christians, and al Majusti from uh, Majus, and, and, and Jahiz, and uh, people from Africa. So it's all over that we were celebrating with. Um, I'll start, for example, by showing you this example, which is a very famous one. Uh, some people uh, have had the chance of going there. And if you go there, and really come back and say, well, three million people attending there, and the number of um, uh, injuries and deaths and the rest of it is limited. It must have been a miracle, or something else. And you look at that, and here is um, a book that was written by Gustav Naluka, who was not a Muslim, by the way, but in the um, Tadbir al Hajj. Hygiene of a Hajj, how to be really true to yourself and, 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 and look after yourself in Hajj. And he wasn't a Muslim, he was asked by the Sultan to write something like that to help Muslims. So Muslims were not actually having a, a chip on their shoulder and say, well, no, I'm not going to accept it if it is coming from a non Muslim. If it is good, it is mine. Al Hikmah, Dalatul Mu'min. Wisdom is the uh, lost property of a Muslim. If whenever he or she finds it, he should really claim uh, ownership of that. Um, I then talk um, uh, in, in, in about some of these guys, um, like uh, Sinan, who is one of the best architects that Europe have ever seen, and some of his buildings, and I say that to my Turkish uh, uh, friends, I say to them, listen, these guys must have got something right that we, with our sophistication nowadays, get it wrong. Look at the number of uh, buildings in Turkey which are trembling after an earthquake, and you will know that they were masters, and we are not today. And the world is not today. Um, I then go about this chap, which I will talk about him later on, Al Hassan ibn Haytham, Rahmatullah alayh, um, Al Bayruni, and then we talk about the blood circulation, uh, the piece in here, and, and there are one or two posters that you must have seen, so I'm not going to go into details of this. Um, but uh, Al Zahrawi, I, I, I actually take my hat, I have a hat over there, I take it whenever I remember him because some of his um, instruments were vital. Um, my, wife had, um, I, my wife had the twins, and one of the twins was refusing to come out, and if it wasn't for one of these medical um, uh, instruments that was invented at that time, Anas would have been here. Or he would have still, well, I think it would be too difficult for his mother. But anyway, we're still using some of that stuff that he has invented um, hundreds of years ago. Um, who am I to talk about Ibn Sina uh, and al Qanun uh, in medicine? Uh, but anyway, um, again, uh, hundreds of years in Europe being the main textbook um, in medical schools. So, what we have done is looked at all of these manuscripts and said, well, all right, is it similar to Leonardo da Vinci, i.e., is it an artist impression? Or is it really some inventions that are engineeringly correct, efficient, and work? So 
I'll take you into a journey. And we've done 3D animations of many of the inventions that we've looked at. And yes, they are quite um, fine. And this one is, is really is a beaut for me. Um, I don't know whether you can hear that or not. That's an alarm clock with water hydraulics. So you can see that these people really knew what they were talking about. Um, again, we looked at the paper, invented in China, but actually um, uh, advanced by the Muslim civilization. And unfortunately, we missed the boat uh, later on um, in the printing. Um, uh, maybe for some reasons outside this meeting today, I can talk about them later on. Here are some um, nice inventions of fountains and stuff like that. And, and the hydraulics and the mechanical engineering that takes place in here, there is no electricity uh, driving this one. It's all water um, hydraulics which is um, doing the job for you. And, and some of the um, ingenious devices underneath that fountain which is really getting it up and running. To me, however, um, this clock which I, I spoke um, about it, a um, couple of years ago to the uh, British Scientific um, uh, Conference in there. Um, and I said, well, it is the clock of civilization, not only one civilization. And I look at it because here it is having the elephant referring to the Indian civilization, the rug to the Persian civilization, the dragon for the Chinese, the phoenix for the Egyptian pharaoh one, um, uh, and then this chap in here, Salah uh, al-Din to uh, represent the Islamic civilization. And the um, al-Jazari, Sam al-Jazari, um, said it's all together, meeting together, helping each other, and building on each other that has allowed us to come up with something um, outstanding like this. And you can see the... Um, and, and actually, the Greek civilization, in terms of the water um, that you can see inside um, in here, and the hydraulics, Archimedes, and all of that. So it's really is a piece of um, ingenious devices that is working. We can make it work. Um, made a, a big um, uh, uh, replica of it in uh, one of the Dubai uh, malls, but unfortunately, people go there and, and, and uh, it's not working. But uh, people from the Indo-Pakistani subcontinent uh, have it as a meeting point nowadays, I understand. I say, well, I'll meet you by the elephant. <laughs> hey, <laughs> isn't that great? So another thing that people attack Muslims with and, 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 and the likes of, um, sometimes I refer to them as nutters or idiots like Kilroy Silk or um, Ashcroft, who was um, uh, attorney general in, in, in the US. Um, Say, well, yeah, and they don't um, uh, treat the woman right and the rest of it. And we have to be very careful and come up with the truth and the facts. And one of the ladies that, again, I have another hat that I take off for her, is Fatma Fihri, 9th century in Morocco and Fez. She came from uh, Tunisia with a lot of money that she has inherited. But she said, well, um, my, my sister has built um, a mosque. I will build a school next to that mosque. And it was the first university that mankind have known um, uh, such, uh, named al Qarawiyin, um, in the year uh, 859. She used um, a practice in Islam, fasting. And she said, well, I will fast until the school is built. And what I will do to be good to the, to the, to the environment is I will ask my architects and builders to use only local materials. I don't want to buy anything from overseas, like the water that we get nowadays flown um, several thousand miles for us to drink in here. What's wrong with the water that comes from the Thames? You ask yourself, I say, well, isn't that madness? It is madness, I can assure you of that. So anyway, she's done that and um, attracted students from all over the world, including people from uh, the Vatican and, 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 and around, and actually the numerals, the Arabic numerals that we use today in Europe came via um, a pope who was poisoned later on. He was studying actually uh, in there and then went into 
Spain, uh, Muslim Spain, to continue his studies, became a pope, and then they got rid of him, unfortunately. Uh, these are the computers of the past, and I mean computers of the past. Very, very um, intelligent piece of instrumentation, the astrolabe and the armillary spheres and all of that. Um, here is a, a lady who really excelled in the art of making astrolabes, and she became the chief scientific officer of Saif ud dawla um, She learned the science from her father. And actually, it is not just um, a piece of um, uh, copper or uh, uh, brass that you uh, print something on, um, in its face. It's a very, very intelligent piece of instrumentation because you have to know that astronomy is involved in here. And the movement of the stars with time. So one that has been made today is not useful 50 years ago or 50 years later. So it has a window of um, use. And she knew that. So she was a very good mathematician, a good mechanical engineer, and a good astronomer. And above all, a fantastic woman that we should really celebrate and be proud of having the likes of her. Why aren't we hearing about the names of many of these women? It's because people like Al-Bayruni will say, if it wasn't, uh, alhamdulillah, if it wasn't been for Rihanna, I would not have been able to deliver my work. So women were actually used and, 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 and contributing, but people did not put their names at the, at the beginning, unless they are big, like Al-Bayruni, who says, I acknowledge the contribution of Rihanna in my work. Um, you can see that uh, in mosques, there was no problem in, in, in women attending mosques and, and, and learning from there, or the other way, that she also was teaching men and other women in the mosque. Um, so in, in here, I will take you in a journey, um, a very nice one. Al-Shifa, um, she was a lady of al Medina um, in Saudi Arabia. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, uh, asked her to teach other women uh, medical practices. So at the time of the Prophet, when he was living there, he asked that lady to spread the knowledge, not just to keep it to her so people um, can um, expand that kind of knowledge. And then later on, she became the chief medical officer in Basra, Iraq, because Umar ibn al-Khattab looked at that and said, well, hey, it's a harbor city. There are so much uh, movements and a lot of um, um, problems that will happen in there. I need someone who understands what he's doing. He sent a lady. He didn't send a man because the lady was the best for that job at that time. And uh, Al-Zahrawi, again, uh, one of my heroes. I have many heroes, alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, short of one or two. Um, anyway, he encouraged both his daughter and granddaughter to practice medicine. So again, he gave an example by being one of the best, but he also said to his daughter and granddaughter, go out, do it, because it's good for others as well. Uh, another example by Ishinelli in Turkey. I, I don't have uh, much time for that at the moment. So what I would like to, to question myself and, and question ourselves is, was that based on astrology, magic, witchcraft? And, and I, I, I have to be um, a bit critical uh, at the moment when people um, say nabawi, the prophetic medicine, and they ignore everything else. And the Prophet وسلم, in many incidents said to people, Antum adra bi umuru dunyakum. There is, um, and, and he actually in, in more than one occasion cursed people who have wrongly told people some, to, to do something against his um, welfare. Um, I'm not going to go into that in, 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 in great details, because what I would like to uh, demonstrate here is the scientific methods that people have uh, uh, developed, experimental evidence, and ethics in medicine. Um, so I'll use a few examples from the literature, um, Al-Razi, Ibn Zuhr, and Al-Baghdadi. And here it is, um, I've, I've just said what I've written in here. And 
but their experiments in particular were used in order to enrich, fill gaps, and resolve conflicts in the knowledge they avidly acquired and then um, critically appraised from various preceding civilizations. So when people looked at Galen, and Galen is a huge name for medical practitioners, they were, they were not afraid of saying he actually made a mistake in him. In much the same way like Ibn Haytham looking at Ptolemy's um, uh, huge book, the, uh, Al Majest, and saying to him, with all the great respect I have for my master, and he would refer to him as master, a teacher, he was wrong in here. So it's respect, but facts. We shouldn't shy away from saying facts. Um, so uh, Ibn al-Baytar, 15th century, in, in his uh, book in here, um, the second um, volume of it, and, and really um, that is from his book, uh, showing that um, work that has been done by uh, uh, Razi in the 9th century, giving mercury to a monkey, poisonous, and saying, well, all right, what is the effect of, of that on him? And of course, the, the poor monkey was uh, holding his hand, uh, his stomach like that, but it lived. So they were really doing experimentations with care, with ethics, but getting um, results at the end of the day. Uh, Ibn Zuhr, or uh, Ibn Zuhr um, uh, in, in Latin or, or, or European uh, pronunciation, depends where you live, um, have uh, that uh, book again. And, uh, Look at, at a, a, a goat in here. I'll leave the Arabic and the English one. Earlier on in my training, when I read those opinions, i.e. controversies that he was not um, happy with, I cut on the long pipe um, uh, of a goat after uh, incising the skin and then covering sheet underneath, completely cut off the substance of the, of the pipe, an area just like a termisa, um, uh, lupine uh, seed, then I kept washing the wound with water and honey till the uh, tail and the animal totally recovered and lived a long time after it. So it wasn't like Dolly, which aged very quickly. But anyway, so th these people were really doing experimentations and, and, and evidence coming out from their uh, from work. Al-Baghdadi, um, the father of Atibar, um, uh, 1162 in the Virgin uh, University, and here is um, the work that he is uh, particularly in the, the mouth and uh, going into um, uh, um, Gallen was saying it is two pieces in, 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 in the in here, but actually uh, he looked at around 2,000 human skulls and came up and said, well, no, Galen was wrong. So actually these people were really practicing medicine, writing about it in an experimental methodology. And I look and, and see who was the, the, the beginner of that, and he is one of my role models, and I believe that he is a role model. What I do for a living um, is um, I design electron microscopes, and that's an electron microscope which can sometimes be here, can be two floors. And I was party um, to a group of people which has now been sold, the, the, the small company, having an electron microscope um, as a little desktop type. That is my electron microscope that I make, and sometimes I have them in my pocket. I didn't bring any with me today. But I've got that huge um, uh, instrument into um, a manageable one, and, and I was proud of it, and, and I um, dedicate a good deal of my work to this chap here, Al-Hassan Ibn Haytham. Um, known in the West as Al-Hassan, was born in Basra and died in Egypt, wrote over 90 books and articles on science on a little lamp. There was no electricity at the time. Um, his book, Al-Majest, al 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 or Al-Manazir, which is a critique of Al-Majest, was a huge uh, piece of work. Um, he went to, into Egypt um, and lived under the, another dictator, and it looks like the, in the Middle East somehow attracts some of these dictators, but I don't know why. May Allah make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Syria to get that uh, dictator um, out of there as well. Anyway, 
And he went there because the Egyptians had the flooding every year and it was ruining um, their um, uh, agriculture. So he said, well, if I go there, I can make uh, a solution for them. When Al-Hakum Bi-Amrillah heard that, he said, well, get me that man. So he came to, um, uh, to Cairo from Iraq via Syria uh, because the Al-Hakim was um, the ruler of this um, place and invited him and went outside Cairo to meet him. That's how big and how important Ibn al-Haytham was for this man. And got him a huge uh, group of people, uh, money, uh, uh, instrumentations, you name it. And said to him, go and do the solution. I'll take you to that journey. Um, in a minute, uh, Ibn Haytham has bisected the eye and gave it several names, including lens, which is coming from lintel. So he was not just um, uh, a passerby, he was actually a practitioner. And uh, I can talk about um, uh, a good deal of his work, but I'm, I'm going to uh, run uh, through a good deal of it. But his um, use of the camera obscura um, is very important and actually has advanced the science of optics since his work. Um, there is some of the, his work um, in comparison to uh, Galen, which I'm not going to, to stop on it. And, and again, uh, Al Ali, uh, uh, Ammar ibn Ali al Mosuli, and Abu Abdullah will be pleased to know that uh, people at that time were using some micro machining to getting um, instrumentations to treat the cataract. Um, is um, a portrait of Ibn al Haytham and uh, Galileo uh, around 1640ish. Anyway, he came from Iraq to Syria and outside Cairo he was met by the ruler of Egypt and he went into that journey, came here to where now the Egyptians have their um, high dam. And when he went there, he found this one. And found this one. And that one. He just looked at all of this and said, well, all right, if we are to build a dam, I will also get rid of the lifestyle of this dam. And had it been good, these people who have built all of this would have done it. That will actually bankrupt Egypt. It is mad. It is not good. And the evaporation of the water from that lake will be so huge and you will deprive all of the land in here that was flooding and actually acquiring more area from the sea every year. No, I'm not going to do it. So he went back to Cairo and said to the um, Sultan, it can't be done, I can't do it. I was wrong. Of course, saying that, the Sultan was very unhappy with him. So what he said, okay, put him in an office, get him um, an office job. But actually Ibn Haytham was a very clever guy. He knew that his head was next. So to escape that, what he did, like most scientists, although I didn't come with two different color uh, socks, I came with only the same color, I'm not that mad, he decided to behave like a madman. So he started saying, well, I'm, I'm actually mad. So they put him under house arrest. And of course, the guards will be looking at him. And he started looking in a critique way in optics. And of course, optics will have some shadows and stuff like that. So he will sometimes run away from his shadow. And sometimes he will run after his shadow. And of course, the guards, because he was doing experiments. And the guards will say, he's mad. <laughs> Luckily, um, the sister of uh, Al-Hakim bi Amrillah decided that enough is enough. And Al-Hakim bi Amrillah was killed. And when the news came out that the, the Sultan was killed, al Hassan ibn Haysim said, hey, and I wasn't mad. I was just pretending to be mad. And here is my book about the critique of um, the big um, uh, problem that we have, which is um, uh, um, Ptolemy. I will abide by that. I was told to be quick. But look, and, and I say that to my students normally, and I'd like to, to share this one with you, that when he was looking at the book, he was lit 
really saying boom, boom, wrong, 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 wrong. No, he was criticizing premises and exercising caution in drawing conclusions. And what his objectives were, employ justice, not follow prejudice, and take care in all that we judge and criticize that we seek the truth and not be swayed by opinion. So I look at the whole thing and say, well, did really civilization come out um, from the way that we looked at it earlier on, or was it really the, the Egyptians, civilization, Chinese, Indian, other Africans, the Greeks, the Romans, and the Muslim civilizations, many of them, although I, I take the S to say that the, the whole thing is um, one um, theme going around, uh, the Renaissance, Industrial Revolution, and modern day civilization. And I can use um, a saying here by um, a fellow physicist, saying that I can see uh, a little further because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. I will stop here and thank you very much for being patient and listening to me.